Hey, welcome back to Matt's Garage DIY. Today I'm going to make a compact pistol rest. Uh, I just wanted something that's small, uh, easy to transport, as well as easy to store when I'm not using it. It's definitely not something that I use all the time. Uh, I've seen, seen a bunch of videos. There's some great ideas out there. Uh, I'm going to be kind of copying some of those ideas. Um, I've noticed that most of them show you a great thing, but don't really show you how to make it. So hopefully this will explain how to make it. So I'm wanting to make this thing as cheaply as possible. Uh, I started by kind of digging through what I had for scraps of plywood. Uh, in this case, I'm using, I think it's all three quarter inch plywood. Uh, definitely half inch would work as well. Cut three pieces. I don't, didn't think I needed to show you that. Uh, this first piece is 10 inches by 12 inches. This piece is roughly nine by nine with a notch cut in the top, uh, roughly two inches per side. And then just a little piece that we're gonna use as a support, two inches across the bottom, about seven inches up the back. So you have an idea of where we're headed. I've just placed the three pieces together. This is roughly what the stand will look like when it's complete. I'm going to use a couple hinges, uh, maybe a little bit of leather to trim up the V-notch where the pistol rests. And uh, if we get real fancy, maybe even use a little fence paint and uh, paint it up. But that's roughly what we're going to be looking at for a final project. Because the goal of this gun rest is to make it uh, compact, I uh, went to Home Depot and I grabbed some piano hinge. I think this was about $6 for a two-foot piece. So I want one piece of hinge, roughly the length of the base. You can just cut it with a hacksaw and then clean up the edge with the file. So I'll do that now and then show you what it looks like. So I have my piece of hinge cut. I'm going to screw it along the bottom here. You can use a little piece of wood to help sort of square that up. You basically want the hinge to not extend below uh, the bottom of your board. So I'm going to use some six and a half or six by half wood screws. These are Robertson's. They've got the little square head. I find they are the nicest to work with. Just screw this on. So I'll finish screwing this on and then we can attach this to the base. So my rest is going to be nine inches tall. So on my base, I've marked off nine inches, squared that line straight across. That is going to be where I want my hinge or the edge of my board to be right like this. Then I'll screw that in place. There you go. So in short, that's the idea. It's gonna hinge like that. Add a couple more screws in here real quick. And there we go. So I finished screwing this together. I've now got all the screws in. Happy with the way that that hinges. You can add a little support now on the back side. I want this roughly lined up centered there. It doesn't have to be exact, but close. When it's folded up, I want that to be pretty close to center. I'm just screw a piece of hinge right here. So I'll basically just repeat the same process that uh, you saw me do for the first piece. Throw some screws in that, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Now I've got my hinge screwed on. Basically, when this thing is folded up, it's going to be about that big. When you get to the range, set it up, fold that out, fold this up. I'm going to add a little bracket in here so that this thing is solid, doesn't move around, and I will show you how I'm going to do that next. Um, also, as a little extra, I think I'll probably just drill a, about a one inch hole, just use a spade bit or something like that, clean it up with a rasp or a file. Gives you a way to grab it. Also, if you want to keep it out of the, out of the way, you can just hang it on a peg on the wall and uh, free up a little bit more counter space. Okay, so I want a little bracket that I can attach right here. Basically, I've just uh, kind of chopped up part of a joist hanger that I had kicking around. I think it's about 16 gauge, uh, maybe only 18 gauge galvanized steel. Doesn't mean to be super heavy, but something that's got a little bit of stiffness to it. I'm just gonna attach it right like that. So when this is folded up, it's tucked out of the way. When I open this up and then tip the rest up, and I have a hole here that I can put a bolt through, hold this whole thing nice and secure, 
gonna drill that out to a quarter inch and just gonna tidy this up. All right, so I've got my little bracket now. Just made that out of tin. You can use something heavier than that. You may have to cut a little notch out here if it interferes with the closing. Um, you do want this to stand, stand nice and straight when it's up like that. So next, I'm just gonna mark kind of where that quarter inch hole is. And we'll come up with a fastener and a way to uh, kind of secure that. And we're just about done. So next we're going to come up with a way to fasten this. I went to Home Depot and I got, they call it a T-nut. Lots of times used for countertops or putting cabinets together. Anyways, uh, it's a quarter inch thread on the inside. Little hex uh, Allen key on the back. It's roughly three eighths. Uh, diameter so I'm gonna drill a 3 8 hole and we are gonna stick that in the bottom and I'll kind of show you what I have in mind here so the plan will be stick stick that in through the bottom It's reasonably well. Okay. When this is folded up, you stick a quarter inch bolt through, hits the threads in there, tighten it up. This will be nice and secure. I think what I'm going to do to make this a little easier to turn, I'm actually going to put a wing nut uh, bolt on there. So I've just put a wing nut onto my bolt. Not very fancy. Probably put a little drop of Loctite in there to keep those two from sliding. If you got a welder, you can tack weld those together as well. Um, just looking for something that's going to make that a little easier to turn when I want to put this together without having to bring extra tools. So there we go. It looks like the threads have caught. It's nice and tight. There we go. You just basically tighten that up with your fingers. This whole thing now is not moving at all got your rest. I'm going to put a little bit of leather in here just uh, soften that up a little bit for whatever I'm putting in uh, to take my shots and do a few other little things to tidy this up but we're well on our way. When this is not in use I want a way to sort of keep this thing from flopping around. Basically I'm just going to drill one more 3 8 hole through here. I actually bought two of these so I'm going to run a longer bolt through once I've drilled the hole put this in the back. Run a longer bolt through I'm not going to use a wing nut on this one. This one, certainly finger tight, a couple threads in will be tight enough to keep this all together while it's either being stored or while uh, traveling back and forth to the range or wherever I'm going to do some shooting. So I'm going to drill my 3 8 hole. I just want to make sure that I missed the hinge. So right about here is good. Doesn't have to be anything super accurate. Come up the bottom. The other T-nut in. When I mix up some epoxy to uh, put some leather in the V of the rest, I will put also put a little bit of epoxy on these just so that they stay in place and I don't need an Allen key or something like that to um, tighten them up. There we go. So this should drop through. Yeah, catches the threads. Finger tight, nicely holds this all together, and away you go. So I want to add a little bit of fabric in here. Got a chunk of leather I cut off an old chair that we got rid of. You can use leather, you can use foam, uh, pretty much anything. It'll just sort of cushion that a little bit. Um, I think if you have too hard of a surface in there, it's going to just cause the gun to skid, skid around a little bit in the V. So. This will help to sort of soften that, prevent any sort of scratching or damage to the finish as well as uh, helping to keep your uh, your pistol nice and uh, steady. So, there we go. I'll trim that up a little more, make it nice and neat. I'm going to mix up some of this uh, LePage two-part epoxy as well. Uh, I'm going to use some of the uh, Loctite, like I mentioned, um, to put on. There we go my wing nut and bolt. So I'm gonna put those together with a Loctite, mix up the glue, cut the leather, and I will show you what that looks like. 
So mix up my epoxy, I've cut some leather. Actually, uh, the strip I cut was about that long. So I'm just gonna put a little extra right down in the bottom and then a second layer over top. Just uh, a little extra for it to sort of sink into right down in the bottom of that groove. I'm just gonna put some epoxy on in here. Push that first piece down right into that. And then I'm going to give it a second coat, kind of right over top, right out to the ends. I want to make sure you get right to the ends. I don't want those edges peeling off on me. A little less concerned in the middle if it's if it's loose, but definitely don't want it to start to fall off. That second piece on. So this epoxy sets up in about five minutes, so that's not going to take very long for that to uh, to be nice and secure. So I'm rub that right to the end. Um, the only other thing I'm going to do is reuse the remaining epoxy. Just put it on the bottom of these uh, peanuts on the bottom. Again, I just picked those up at Home Depot. They were about a buck fifty a piece. Here's the final product. Gave it a quick coat of paint. The epoxy is now dry. So one last quick demo on setting it up. Take these two bolts out. We stand it up. Put wing nut into this little hole right here. I just drilled a little hole in the top just to store this bolt when you're not using it so you don't end up losing it. It just kind of falls in there and drops out of the way. There you go. You can throw a uh, shooting bag on there, just something to rest your hands on while you have the uh, pistol and the rest. And there is your $10 pistol shooting rest. So oh, just a quick little demo to end off this video. I'm just using a pellet gun because I can't go blasting off rounds in the garage. But there's our target about 7 meters away.